Greetings, cyber truckers and citizens of the internet. This is Rendog coming at you from a toll booth in this Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2 series. In the previous episode, we were on our way to Paris from Dover to deliver car parts. And in this episode, my friends, we are going to see if we can get our buttholes into Paris to make this delivery so that we can get some more cash money and hopefully buy our own truck in the near future. So let's press enter and buy um, our, our toll, we'll pay for our toll anyway, and it's back into the freaking rain we go, guys. We've got 91 miles to go before we get to Paris and damn that is a that is a long way man <laughs> that is a, a freaking long way and the weather is looking absolutely awful um, I think what we need, need to probably do is turn on our lights <laughs> it feels like we need to turn on our lights right how do we how do we do that let's uh, quickly have a look in the options um, we haven't had to use the lights yet so how do we turn on lights light modes L L okay so let's press uh, L Oh, there we go. Okay, lights on. Uh, now we are, I mean, we're, now we're basically uh, within the law. I think we were actually breaking the law, but not having our lights on. Um, <laughs> you know, all of this reminds me of a story that I wanted to tell you guys in this episode. And uh, it's basically the story of my very first traffic accident. And it's a tragic story, I must say. Um, I, I'm just checking if we need to get fuel. We've still got half a tank left, so I think we're good. We don't need, we don't need fuel just yet. Um, but guys, it's a tragic story and it happened when I was 18 years old and it happened with the very first car that I ever owned. My dad, or my stepdad anyway, saved up a bunch of money to buy me a Volkswagen Golf. It was a beautiful, beautiful red Golf. Uh, its name was Maximus and he was amazing. He was a, a beautiful Cyberdog Red in fact. He was all basically the same color as Cyberdog Red and uh, he had about I don't know, about 20,000 kilometers on the clock. He was basically brand new. My dad bought him from a police auction. He, Maximus was a stolen vehicle and uh, we bought it from a police auction. The serial number in the engine was scraped off and it was it was kind of shady, I must say, guys. But it was South Africa, you know. It's 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 the third world, guys, or the, the second world. You know, you can get away with a few things down, down south in South Africa, like buying stolen vehicles from policemen, for example. <laughs> but it was a, an official auction. Let me just say that. It wasn't illegal. It was a legal auction. Anyway, uh, it took me three or four attempts to get my driving license. And that's a story for, for another day. Ooh, the sun is coming out. Sweet. Um, ooh. Oops. My bad, dude. Uh, that's a story for another day though, why it took me so long to get my driver's license. But anyway, <laughs> you know, my dad, I woke up one morning, I mean, in those days when I was 18, I was sleeping till like 11 a.m., you know, I was useless. And my dad came into my room and he was like, get up, get out of bed, man, it is 11 a.m., why are you still in bed? We're, we're, we're going to go uh, to the shops or something, meet me in the, in, the, in the garage or in the driveway, we had a driveway in South Africa, meet me in the driveway in, in uh, 10 minutes. And we're going somewhere, and I, and I was terrified. My dad was quite a scary guy when he, when he was, well, he is quite a scary guy when he's angry. And uh, I got dressed and I thought, oh God, uh, we need to turn our wipers off. Um, man, can't remember, I can't remember the keys. How do we turn wipers off again? Uh, let's just go back to keyboard. Uh, wipers. Wipers. P. I knew it was P. Uh, P. P. There we go. No, P. All right, there we go. Um, so I got dressed. I was petrified. I was sweating like a goat, man. Went into the driveway, and there in the middle of the driveway was a Cyberdog Red City Golf, Volkswagen City Golf, just for me, and my dad gave me the keys, and it was like a Volkswagen advert, man. I was like, do you remember the days of your life? I don't know. <laughs> Some of you old Cyberdogs probably remember that advert, but it was, it was kind of like that. I was so happy, man. I was the happiest freaking doggy on the planet. And my dad said to me, you know, you've got a car now, you've got to be responsible, you know, no drinking and driving, all of that sort of thing, always wear your seat belt. And he said to me, if you crash this car, you are in trouble. And so I naturally was petrified. Uh, you know, he gave me a really stern look. I mean, a, a look that could freeze freaking water. And, uh, ooh, ooh, sorry, I'm trying, oh my, oh God. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was trying to indicate there, so to try and pass this truck over here. 
or this uh, this convoy of trucks over here. Anyway, I got into my brand new Volkswagen and I was so happy. It was beautiful, man. Uh, it had a really bad radio system, but I didn't care. I turned up the volume. I was blasting distorted pop music all the way up and down my street, driving that, that car like nobody's business. Like I was the main man. I was like, man, I'm going to pick up so many girls in this car. This, this car is a freaking babe magnet. You know what I'm saying? And man, I was so excited. And I thought, you know what? I'm actually, because my dad said to me, okay, you can drive around the block a while and then come back again. And you know, every day you can drive a little bit more until you're, you're really ready to go on long journeys. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna take this bad boy on a long ass drive. I'm gonna drive to the Magic the Gathering shop, which was about 10 kilometers away from me to go buy some magic cards. And then I'll come back. And I mean, what could happen in 10 kilometers? It was like a 20 minute drive. You know, what could, what could honestly happen? And, uh, we were living in Johannesburg, right? And I don't know how many of you guys have been to Johannesburg, but it's Johannesburg has really crazy weather. Sometimes it's sunny, sometimes it's rainy, and thunderstorms just can come out of nowhere. You know, four o'clock in the afternoon, there's a freaking thunderstorm that just comes out of nowhere. And when I say thunderstorm, man, I mean hail, massive droplets of rain that'll freaking melt your face. I mean, I, I'm talking serious rain up in here, people. Serious rain. And uh, man, just, just trying to get a, a nice view of the surroundings here. Really, really awesome. Uh, oh, as soon as I as soon as I take my eyes off the road, I just swerve, which is exactly what I guess happens in real life too. All right, there's a toll gate over here. Let's indicate that we are. Oh, 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 God! Got to go into the truck lane. Uh, one of you cyber dogs pointed out in the previous video that I didn't go into the truck lane, so my bad. Um, <laughs> so anyway, I decided to go buy some magic cards in my new car. I mean, seriously, what could happen? What what could seriously happen? And of course, I tempted fate and. Uh, on my way to the magic shop, I got lost and I had a map book. Um, come on, come on. I want to pay my toll, man. Man, you got to get, you got, oh, there we go. You got to get into like the perfect position over here. There we go. Um, anyway, the rain started coming down. There was a Johannesburg thunderstorm like nobody's business and the rain started coming down and I was trying to check the map to see uh, if I could get to the magic shop. My mum always used to take me to the magic shop and I thought that I knew the way, but I, I just, I did not know the way at that point. And uh, I was trying to check the, the map and I went up a hill and then the, the hill sort of peaked. It was quite a, a steep hill in the city and then it peaked. And then I couldn't see what was over the other side of the hill. And what had happened all the way down that motorway, there had been an accident because of the rain. And I was driving, I was probably driving at about this speed, about 30, 40 kilometers an hour. And uh, as I came over the precipice of that hill, I was looking down at the map that was in my lap. And as I looked up, there was a car right in front of me and I slammed on the brakes. And of course, the road was completely wet and and I didn't know how to, you know, uh, stop in rain properly. You know, you're supposed to tap the brakes. You're not supposed to just slam it. And I slammed those brakes. Uh-oh, am I supposed to be turning here? No, no, just carrying on, carry on going straight over here. Um, and I just literally, I remember the car, the, the, the wheels locking and the car beginning to slide and the car sort of, uh, let, let me demonstrate. There's no one behind me. The car sort of did this and then it started sliding in a sort of, uh, you know sliding along the road not straight it was sort of at an angle sliding down the road and I went smack bang into the back of a very large pickup truck and uh, oh the speed limit is a hundred I can I can pump it down this road man and uh, the problem was however guys that this pickup truck had a giant ass steel bumper uh, around the back of it it obviously had been in many accidents so the driver was like I'm tired of my car being dinged I'm just gonna put this ridiculous bumper into the back of my truck and that bumper basically just crushed the front of my my brand new Maximus smashed in the bonnet uh, smashed in the side panelings twisted the freaking wheels oh, oh god Whew. man I literally just flashback to that moment that I crashed into that car man <laughs> that was absolutely insane exactly the same thing almost just happened right there guys that was a, a if you guys are wondering what it felt like that's exactly what it felt like except I went piling into the back of that freaking pickup truck anyway my car got smashed up pretty bad but not too bad uh, that I couldn't drive it I got out the car you know we exchanged insurance and you know all that all that jazz and then I had to take my freaking busted up Maximus back to my dad to explain what had just happened and I'll never freaking forget that day man I drove 
super slowly to get home. I was trying to delay the inevitable. I was trying to drive as slow as possible. I was driving like this, man, like 15 kilometers an hour. Grannies were hooting behind me. They were like, get out the way, you freaking noob driver. Um, anyway, eventually I got home and my mom was in the kitchen making dinner and I went in and, and she looked at my face and she immediately knew. She said to me, did you have an accident? And I was like, yeah, I did. And I know what she was thinking in her mind was, you freaking butthole! But she didn't say that, but it would have been awesome if she did. Uh, but, <laughs> but she sort of just looks, it looks like we're coming into Paris now, guys, this is awesome. Uh, she just looked at me with a sort of, with pity, I would say. And she said, well, you better go tell your dad he's sleeping uh, in the bedroom. And uh, Paris discovered, awesome, we are in Paris, great. Uh, and I went into his bedroom and there he was. And my, my stepdad is about six foot five. He is a beast of a man. He is a giant I mean, he could probably thump me uh, to the ground with one swing of his bear claw. And uh, I went into his room and there he was sleeping. He'd been watching golf. I still remember the, the golf was playing and he was, he was sleeping away, having a nice little rest. And uh, man, I, I shook him on the shoulder and, and I, I, I basically had a, a tear in my eye at that stage. And he looked at me and he, and he knew instantly what had happened. And uh, he just looked at me and he just said, just leave we'll talk about this later he was so angry man his face was red he was fuming he'd been, you know he saved up for that car and he'd, he'd warned me to be responsible and everything and man i just let him down i let him down daddy i'm so sorry man man if my dad watches this uh i hope he does i'm really sorry about that accident dad <laughs> my freaking bad um anyway guys <laughs> In the end of the story is he did forgive me however i had to work my freaking ass off in a restaurant as a way to to pay him back the damage that um it, you know to pay back the money that it took to repair that car it took me about a year to get paid that wrong way offense oh i'm on the wrong side of the road <laughs> oh god oh yes we are in we, we're in france guys we're supposed to be on the right hand side of the road my freaking bad Man, Dad, I hope you're not watching this. And if you are, I'm a much better driver now than in this game. Trust me. Um, I, I, I'm, re I'm a really bad driver in this game. But in, in real life, I'm much better. Um, <laughs> I know all of you guys don't believe me. But it's true. Seriously. I haven't had an accident since that accident. Uh, well, actually, I had one more accident. But um, um, I'll tell you guys about that one <laughs> another day. Because that was a far more embarrassing accident. But anyway, guys, it looks like we have made it to our destination, which is epic. And guess what we're doing now? We are going to be trying to park this thing again, uh, just like we did it, what, a couple episodes ago when we delivered uh, the fertilizer. Well, yeah, it was, fer it was either fertilizer or balls. I can't remember. Um, but here we are. We have arrived, we arrived at Posped, and we are delivering these car parts. And uh, let's see. It looks like it's around the corner over here. And uh, man, I hope that I can do this a little bit better than I did the last time. I almost jackknifed the freaking truck the last time we tried to do this. Uh, but let's have, a, let's have a look. Let's see, where is the parking space? Oh, that's easy. That's, this one's easy. This one's easy. Okay, so what we're going to do, right, is come in re real, real slow, checking my right-hand mirror there to make sure that I don't scrape the wall. Then what we can do is straighten out like this, checking the rearview mirrors all the time. Straighten, 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 straighten. Um, let's have a, let's have a look. All right, straighten, straighten, straighten. Let's get back into the cockpit. Are we straight? I don't think we, I don't think we're straight. Let's have a look. Okay, here we go. We are reversing. Straighten, straighten. All right. What I need to do is straighten the truck, actually. There we go, there we go, there we go. Okay, we're straightened, we've straightened, kind of. No, 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 no. Again, again. Let's try and straighten the, the truck engine. What is this actually called? The, the, the cab? Yeah, that's what it's called, right? It's the cab, right? All right, there we go. So the cab is relatively straight. Come on, baby! No! <laughs> oh, God. 
see, what we got to try to do is get the cab and the, the, the trailer completely straight, right? Okay, looks like we've done it. Looks like we've done it. There we go. Beautiful. That's beautifully straight. Okay, beautifully straight. Let's just make sure the wheel is absolutely straight. There we go. That's looking good, guys. I think we're going to do it this time. No! No! Oh, you butthole. Rendog, you freaking butthole. Alright, let's try straighten out again. There we go. That's perfectly straight, right? That is perfectly straight. Alright, this is it. This is the one. This is the one! Yes? No? No. <laughs> it's not the one! <laughs> No! Oh god, I think I'm doing worse this time. Well, I haven't done any jackknifing yet, so that's good. Let's just make sure the wheel is straight. I want to try come right up to this fence to try get as straight as possible. Uh, let's go to this view, actually. Oh, this, this, this view is actually... Hey, check it out, man. This, this view... This view is actually really good for parking, right? Oh god. Okay. Okay, there we go. That looks that looks perfectly straight. This has gotta be the one. That oh god people. This is so hard, man. Seriously. This is so freaking hard. Why can I not do this? Alright, there we go. Alright. Okay, this is the one. This is the one. You gotta make like slight slight adjustments when you're reversing, that's the thing, right? There we go, we did it! Yes! Oh, <laughs> thank the Lord! Oh man, epic. Okay, great stuff. 146 miles driven. Um, we got 2,900 pounds for that delivery, 225 XP, still a newbie, but that is excellent. Oh man, that was epic. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of Let's Play Euro Truck Simulator 2. This has been Rendog, your driver and storyteller. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, you hit that like button. And if you're from somewhere new on the interbumps, here's a subscribe button for you to hit keep up with this series and all the other gaming series on the Rendog channel. Guys, this has been Rendog failing to drive a truck. We'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye, my friends.